my balls are so clean, I touch them and I feel nice. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Ball down! <laughs> With Christmas bringing an extra 15 kilos of clutter into the average home, the festive season can be the most stressful time of year for an obsessive cleaner. I don't like all the tinsel wrapped round things. Just give them a bit of a stir around. The tree will go up on the 1st of December. It gets taken down at about 2 o'clock on Christmas Day. Not even at the Queen's speech. <laughs> no. But is a clean house just for Christmas? Over 40 obsessive cleaners have taken on the challenge of a lifetime as they cleaned for a complete stranger at the opposite end of the spectrum in the hope it would change their lives for the better. You don't want a sandwich, do you? <laughs> You're keeping the stuff like a museum. I can't talk. We couldn't move on Wednesday in this house. This is the stuff I'm having to deal with. Dog pieces. Now four of them are back to check on the progress of their old friends. It looks the same. We didn't see eye to eye last time. <laughs> Hello, Minnie. How are you doing? Will those with very different attitudes to cleaning have reverted back to their old ways? We've gone to such effort. Just been totally ignored. Wow. I knew they'd be here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're the ones wrong. Or will the obsessive cleaners have changed their lives for the better? Oh, now that's what a bed should be like. Two years ago, obsessive cleaner Richard... Hello, sir. ..and antiques hoarder Christopher made the life-changing decision to challenge their obsessions. Where do you sit? Although not OCD-diagnosed, IT manager Richard spends two months of each year cleaning and organising his home. As soon as that front door's shut, I'm hoovering, I'm cleaning, I'm tidying, I'm organising, I can't stop. Richard from Northampton was keen to showcase his obsessive cleaning skills to a stranger. I've got a special gift for bringing order to chaos, um, and I enjoy it. So he took four days out of his cleaning regime to help ex-antiques dealer Christopher reclaim his four-bedroom Wiltshire home that was disappearing under three tonnes of antiques and collectibles. Wow. The house is in chaos. But getting Christopher to join in on the cleaning wasn't always easy. I seem to be doing a lot of the, uh, the grafting here, Christopher. Well, I'm not getting down there, it's too dusty. <laughs> No, then run your mop over that bit. This is something I never thought I'd see. Amazing. Yeah, it's something I never thought I'd do. <laughs> With the help of Christopher's friend, Chalice... Oh, that's gross. You don't want a sandwich, do you? <laughs> <laughs> they managed to clear and clean the living room and kitchen in four days and fill two skips. <laughs> Revealing a house Christopher could comfortably entertain in once more. <laughs> God, isn't it clean? Oh, my God! How clean is that? That's amazing. It's a usable mm. working kitchen now, which is what one wants. It's all about maintaining what we've put in place, and it will keep the house in a proper standard. I'm very appreciative. But because clearing downstairs was such a monumental task, Richard didn't have time to tackle the rest of the house leaving the front room and bedroom in the hope Christopher would carry on the good work. Can you teach us how dog new tricks? I have absolutely no idea. We'll, we'll find out. Now Richard's back for one day in Wiltshire to check on Christopher's progress and try and finish off what he started. My fear is that he's just gone back to his old ways. He's lazy, he's let stuff build up in his lounge. As to what Richard is going to think about the house, hmm, I do not know. I think he'd be surprised. What would be really good and would make me really happy was if he's actually gone the next level, sold some stuff, done some antique fairs, carried on the good work that we started. Initial impressions for me are there's not much of a change. I'm pretty sure those branches were what we put there last time. Hello, sir. Richard. <laughs> How are you doing? Very well. How nice to see you. It's wonderful to see you. Come on in. Ah. Am I going to be shocked? 
Last time, Richard left a welcoming living room for Christopher to relax in. I'm, I'm quite impressed, Christopher. Are you? Yeah, I'm quite impressed. You've kept it to a good standard. On his first visit, Richard left Christopher with a new fridge and usable kitchen for the first time in two years. It's certainly not the chaos it was. Do you mind if I look in the fridge? You may, yeah. Do you want a mask? mask? I'm not going to need one. Last time you nearly passed Yeah, that. I don't know. If, is that going to happen? It is on. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I'm certainly not gagging, Christopher. So that's, that's much better. Much better. Very impressive, sir. Richard is now keen to take a look at Christopher's bedroom, a room he didn't have time to tackle on his first visit. Now, that's what a bed should be like. Not with loads of clutter on it. You've done a cracking job in here, mate. For me, the biggest thing from, from last time was the bed. I could only yeah. sleep on one side of the bed and then move the boxes and sleep on the other side. <laughs> now, I can, now I can turn over at night. Now you can entertain. What, a new girlfriend who I met a month ago? Oh, wonderful. And she's been to stay. I'm really pleased for you, sir. I'm really pleased. Mm. I thought if he kept the house tidy and kept it nice, he might might score with the ladies, and I, and I think he has. He's got a girlfriend, and it's, um, yeah, it's brilliant. I think I did make a difference. I think I gave him probably the kickstart he needed to transform his life. I'm feeling kind of proud as well right now. Richard has got just 24 hours to make a difference to Christopher's life once more. Right, sir. Let's have a look in here, then. The front room has been inaccessible for the past 15 years. I'm guessing there's stuff in here you want to throw away. There's probably stuff in here we can sell. But unless we get in here and get stuck in, we're not going to find out. That's very true. Yeah. It's done well to maintain it, so, yeah, I'll give him another boost. I'll give him another hand. The average lifespan of an artificial Christmas tree is six years. But for an obsessive cleaner, it can last just one month. I buy new every year. The festive season, with all its extra Yuletide clutter, can result in their rituals with cleanliness and order going into overdrive. I have a, that distance right. between each bauble <laughs> okay. on the tree. I, I position them like that. See, now I've got a dilemma, cos I've put that ball too close to the other <laughs> ones, and it's, it's going to really stress me out. 47-year-old fitness fanatic Mark spends up to 10 hours a day keeping his home perfect. This is my sink, which is nothing special apart from the fact that I clean it about 50 times a day. Mum of two and obsessive cleaner Amanda spends over 20 hours a week keeping her home germ-free, including bathing her children in diluted antiseptic. Once a week, I'll give the kids a dental bath. I know that they've been cleaned in the right way. It actually helps protect me from getting nits as well in her hair. Our obsessive cleaners are in Peterborough, home to mum of three, Lindsay. Hi, Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm Mark, nice to meet you. Hi, Mark. Hi, Amanda. Hi, nice Amanda. to meet you. Do you want to go around the back yeah, and then I'll let you in? After you. Thank you. I'll meet you around there. OK. Although not OCD diagnosed, Lindsay can hoover her living room for up to 20 times a day and clean her toilet up to 30 times a day. I think there's too many diseases and funny things in this country and we need to be on top of them. Mm. Hi, guys. Do you want to come in? Yeah. Thank you. Right, so this is the kitchen. When we're preparing for Christmas, I don't know about you guys, but I set aside a whole weekend for decorations and for cleaning the bits and pieces, and I schedule that in the diary very early on. So even though it's all been in tubs of the bits and pieces, I'll still bleach it with boiling water and a few other products. And then I'll just drop all my baubles into the boiling water with a bit of bleach. Well, that's... Um, it's a bit extreme, it's, isn't it's, it? It's, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll just give them a bit of a stir around. Oh, I'm surprised you haven't disintegrated your baubles with that <laughs> potion in there. No, they all seem fine. Right, so now we'll um, put my nice sparkly balls onto the tree. Obviously, colour scheme-wise, it has to match the room. The room is blues, greys and whites, so the tree has to match. If you went and put a pink or red bauble on there, I'd probably have a bit of a fit. 
And then what I try and do is, is try and do silver blue, silver blue, silver blue. But my balls are so clean, I touch them and I feel nice. I can, I can smell the bleach yeah, off them actually, which is nice. Once the tree is dressed, I'll take a photo so I know where my ball balls have been. And every so many days, I'll um, take the ball balls off, bleach them again and put them back on the tree and refer to my photo. Lindsay can re-bleach her ball balls up to ten times over the Christmas period. And then that's mission complete. Good job. Yes. Mark was very impressed and I think he'll be bleaching his ball balls from now on. And next, it's the turn of Mark to put on the festivities. Right, how I do my... Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Ball down! <laughs> Last time, obsessive cleaner Vinny decided to help clear charity shop hoarder Robin's house of 20 years of grime and clutter. Hello, hello, hello. Would you mind? My ash you I'm not being offensive, but yeah, you've got an animal in your hand. I anti back about 100 times a day. Although not OCD diagnosed, 51 year old fitness instructor Vinny from South Yorkshire works full time and still manages to clean for over 30 hours a week. To challenge his obsessions, he left his ordered pet free life to spend four days at Hoarder Robins, which was overrun by six dogs. Come on, in, in, in. Oh, my God. Oh, God. That is the um, strongest smell ever. It's the stuff I'm having to deal with. Dog feces. The state of the house was pushing Robin's nine-year relationship with partner Kevin to the edge. It's got to the point where I spend more time here at the allotment than I do at home. Yeah, that is a very special picture, mate. Mm. And you look both very, very happy there indeed. My hope for the end of the week is that uh, when the house is in a presentable condition that he'll, he'll come round and spend more time here with me. So charity shop owner Robin put up with Vinny's vigorous cleaning. Vinny, you're so obsessed you've scrubbed the damn numbers off my cooker. I don't know what's what now. No, there was no numbers on there. Oh, Absolutely not. In four days, they transformed three rooms, returning Robin's home back into a place that he and partner Kevin could learn to enjoy again. Oh, oh that's lovely. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. He's done this for you. I wanted to be with you so much, but I just... The house was such a wedge between us. Oh, thanks, Minnie. I'm just glad I brought these two people together again. And I can go away now and think, well, yeah, I did something good. Now Vinny's back in Kent to catch up with Robin and Kevin. Have they managed to maintain Vinny's high standards and keep their relationship on track, or is there still work to be done? I'm worried to a certain degree whether Robin's gone back. Hopefully, you know, he's brought his relationship with his partner forward because I know it was pretty much on a very rocky road, so it's important, you know, that I walk into a situation where I feel that he, he really has made some changes. That's what I would like. It's never going to be up to Vinny's standards despite all my hard work that I've put into it. I want to get inside. I definitely want to see the guys as much as I want to see the house. Hello, Vinny. How are you doing? Fine, how are well, you? Well, I was expecting you to come to the door with the dogs in your hands. And you know what? Now you've not got the dog in your hand. Good oh, to I'm see really you. Welcome. Kevin. Good to see you, Vinny. After 50 hours cleaning and five bottles of bleach, Vinny left a hygienic kitchen. Well then, guys. The one good thing, you've actually got the dogs out in the kitchen. Yeah. Before, Vinny transformed Robin's bedroom, removing piles of clothes from the floor and putting new cotton sheets on the couple's bed. What happened to those beautiful white sheets? About 10 days after you were here the last time, yeah. the Jack Russell had her babies on it. Yeah, yeah. The puppies after that ate the rug that was on the floor, so that ended up going as well. After removing a skip full of rubbish, Vinny left Robin with a relaxing living room. But that was 12 months ago.
I, I, as a matter of fact, I cannot wait to hear. Well, this I have to say, I am ashamed of this. Basically, closed the shop, my own personal stuff that I hadn't given away, it came in here. And that's your excuse? I shut the shop? Yeah. I've been busy working on the house, Winnie. Whatever you say to him, quite welcome to it, cos, yeah, drives me potty. <laughs> I used to love coming sitting in here. Yeah, because we made time. a massive effort with it. I, I'm absolutely lost for words, mate. I'm just really, really, really pissed off now that we've gone to such effort and, and it's just... just been totally ignored. I feel very much like I was ganged up on. I didn't get any support off of Kevin whatsoever, even though he's added to that mess. He won't admit it, of course, but he has. I don't like walking away. Now I need to see if we can turn it around now, again. The average household receives 38 Christmas cards every year. But for some obsessive cleaners, even receiving one is seen as a major source of anxiety. For me, it's just like, this is hell. <laughs> So, you know, I put them in the bin. With bauble bleaching Lindsay's house inspected, next our group of obsessive cleaners are in Hampshire to visit fitness fanatic Mark. Hi, guys, how are you doing? How are you? Come on in. Thank you. Although not OCD diagnosed, Mark can spend up to 50 hours a week ordering and organising his home and is particularly obsessed with his curtains. I actually get quite stressed if I can't tidy things up. If I catch it out the corner of my eye, the curtains are not right. I'll have to adjust them, otherwise I just can't relax. And at Christmas, any decorations that create mess are a no-no. Don't like all the tinsel wrap round things. Minimalist is my Christmas, I think. Right, so this is my lounge. My, um, I don't have a, a real tree. Uh, I just, I don't think I could actually tolerate this. Yeah, is it yeah. because of the mess that it would oh, make? Yeah. So I've always had a, an artificial tree. I'll put this last bit on the tree. In there. I like white and blue. I just hate golds and reds and yeah. stuff like that. So do you tend to hang on every branch or just well, really space them Don't out? laugh when I tell you this. I have a, that distance between right. each bauble <laughs> okay. on the tree. So if I, I position them like that, and obviously I make sure that there's um, nothing that's too close to one of the same colour. Right. See, now I've got a dilemma, because I've put that ball too close to the other <laughs> ones, and it's, it's going to really stress me out. And I can't move that one. So this is what happens in my world. I start moving one. You're going to move them all. Then I've got to move them all. Um, right, how I do my... Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Ball down! <laughs> it's not got a full wow. set now. <laughs> I tend to have a sort of set way of doing things. So I tend to sort of wind the lights around the tree at the end. Right. The longest Mark has taken to put up his Christmas tree is two days. So you seem quite stressed about the lights. Oh, oh, no, at... I think the tree is really stressing him out, actually. <laughs> it just, seems you know like what? it's hell for him. In a minute, I'm going to rip the tree down. Let's see these lights switched on. Right. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, Mark, that looks really nice. That's so worth the effort. Oh, I can feel the stress subsiding now. Do you? Right, yeah. You're feeling I, better. God, I was actually going to punch one of the balls in there. <laughs> Quietly confident I might win Best Tree Award, even if I did look a bit stressed and dropped some of the balls on the floor. Finally, it's time for Amanda to demonstrate her obsessive Christmas. So the tree will go up on the 1st of December and then it gets taken down at about 2 o'clock on Christmas Day. Not even at the Queen's speech. <laughs> no. <laughs> In Kent, with partner Kevin out at work, charity shop owner Robin's living room has become a dumping ground again, and Vinny has just 24 hours to improve it. I want to go in there, get that front room back to the way they wanted it, and hopefully that will inspire them to finish the rest of the house uh, and move forward. Whoa. Right, where do you want to start? There's a brush in here. I wonder why that's in here. Out of place, isn't it, really? <laughs> That's the second brush in there I found. I'm pity it's not being used for the proper job, eh? Moan, moan, moan. I'm sorry I need to pick up on this point, but this is the third brush I've just found in here. I've had an awful lot to do. Vinny doesn't know what's been going on in my life over the past year. Um, cleaning the front room was the least of my priorities. 
OK, what's with all the albums? Oh, these um, the photos of my, my best friend, who died earlier this year. Right. It was very painful. I had to look after him while he was dying, and um, <laughs> it was hard. OK, OK. OK. Come on, come on. Let it out. Seeing Robin um, break down like I've just seen him over the pictures of his friends kind of has made me realise that he's just been left alone in this surrounding which he's not happy with. He wants it finished and he doesn't see any way through this. And, and I sympathise with him as well. Hopefully he really realises, you know, a bit more why things have become the way they have. I've had a lot to cope with in the past year. So it's, um, it's just the way it's been. Twelve months ago, obsessive cleaner Louise and hoarder Michelle decided to see if they could use each other's obsessions to help themselves. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, Hi. Hello. Although not OCD diagnosed, XRAF Corporal Louise's compulsive cleaning is in danger of putting a strain on her relationship with her two children. I have a routine with my family. Everything we do is quite ordered. And in, in my head, as long as it's ordered like that, everything feels like it's running smoothly. I'd be curious to know how people can sort of let their houses go. I quite like the idea of going in and having a good clean. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> and Louise left her minimalist home for four days to help organise hoarder Michelle's two tons of possessions and quirky collectibles. Been like this since I moved in. The dolls are scaring me a little oh, bit. Oh, you frightened? <laughs> a little bit. That one yeah, especially looks quite real. Funny. You know, if you could maybe part with a couple, the money you could. <laughs> Michelle's seventh lorry load of belongings had just turned up at partner Michael's house and was in danger of overwhelming him entirely. I just look at it sometimes and think, why do we want all this stuff? There is a certain amount of strain uh, between Michael and myself. It's bound to be because it's a lot to expect him to accept. For the sake of their 10-year relationship, Michelle allowed Louise to cut back on her 40 years' worth of possessions. It's better if she's at way. <laughs> After four days, Louise got rid of one and a half tons of Michelle's belongings, freeing up two guest bedrooms and giving Michael his home back again. Can I actually see the windows? Oh, oh, oh don't, don't cry, could you oh. really cry? That's lovely. Go in, go in. <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, You're it's right. lovely, yeah, it's fine, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now Louise is back in Swindon to see if Michelle and Michael have managed to keep their bedrooms clutter-free and their relationship on track. I really do hope that she has sort of kept the rooms that we worked on as they were when I left. And I really do think Michael was keen to keep them like that as well. So, fingers crossed, Michael will have put his foot down. I'm really looking forward to seeing Louise again. I'm hoping that she will be surprised when she sees the rooms. Hi, Hiya! Hiya! Hi, 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 Hiya! After four days' hard graft, the guest room was decluttered and cleaned with some of the dolls put into storage. But has it stayed that way? What do you think? It looks really nice. It's lovely. Yeah, you've done really well with this room. Thank you. I was worried the bed would be covered again. Yeah. It's really yeah. nice. You've done a lovely job in here. So, I know when I came last time, you wanted this room for your daughter. Are you using it? Yes. It's getting used now yeah. because it's usable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm really pleased that you've kept it looking so nice and tidy. Thank you. Wow. I knew they'd be here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just freak me out, I think, because they look so lifelike. Yeah. I don't think I could have one in my house. Yeah. 
thinking it might come alive in the middle of the oh, night. <laughs> too many horror movies. Exactly. <laughs> right, should we go and have a look at the other room? Yeah. Yeah? Go for it. This is the one I'm most excited about. Yeah? <laughs> After you. After 80 hours of streamlining, the box room was reclaimed as a second guest bedroom, allowing grandchildren to stay for the first time in five years. But that was a year ago. Michelle. <laughs> OK. What do you think? I kind of was hoping that there would have been loads more space. Mm, mm. But you've kind of just replaced it <laughs> with um, other things. To a certain extent, I have because there were things that I didn't want to get rid of, yeah. obviously. Are your grandchildren still using it? Yes. Are your family using it? Yeah, they Fantastic. love staying here. Yeah. See, I've got their photograph know, up I on know. the wall. But just promise me that you won't put anything more no, in this no, room. No, 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 I promise you. In <laughs> fact, if anything, things are going to be taken out. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, I've found somewhere else to put them. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Louise. Hello. Hello. Are you all right, yes, girl? Yes, thank you. Oh. <laughs> the bedrooms may have stayed under control, but in the garden, it's a different story. It's changed a bit. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. This is like... This is like the three rooms in the garage. And there's another surprise for Louise. So why do you need to keep this? It's not even out of the packet, Michelle. Can Brides. Guess? Can you guess? You came married? Yeah. Never. We came married next year. Oh. Yeah. 25th of July. Wow. Well, I'll let you keep yeah. that one then. Thank That's you. an exception. They're an absolutely lovely couple, and I'm really pleased for them, you know, getting married. Well, the life change between then and now is that we know what we're, we're doing with our, the rest of our lives. We're going to get married next year. Thank you very much, Louise, for all you've done for us. It's really nice. Nice to see you both again. Yes, lovely to you see you. Take care. Bless you. Louise has helped me so much. She's given me the push I needed and the help, physically and emotionally, because I think the emotional help was invaluable. Take care. Bye-bye, darling. Bye. -bye, darling. Bye. It's just great to see that my obsession's been able to help somebody. Um, and I'm really pleased that M Michael and Michelle have been able to take something from my visit. Suitcase. Okay. In Wiltshire, Richard has just 24 hours to help hoarder Christopher. A pair of mouldy old shoes. Yeah, they're not very good, are they? He wants to clear the front room, last used 15 years ago. Previously, Christopher was buying 10 antiques every week to add to his collection. So since I was here last, have you cut back a bit on your, your collecting? Mm. I've only bought one thing, and that's the clock in the sitting room. Well, well, that's not so bad, then. You've made good headway, actually. Yeah, you have. I have, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just breaking the back of this. Big well, win. I mean, it'd be wonderful to have this room in use. Absolutely amazing. What we need to do is try and find some stuff that, that you can sell or get to an auction. Do you reckon this would be, be worth something? Yeah. OK. Antique lobster. That'll be snapped up at auction. <laughs> Let me guess. Hoover. Yep. And I'm guessing it's quite old. I think it's Edwardian, yeah. It's got a good pump action on it. So that's going to go to the... That can go to the auction, yeah. Right. Christopher's off to the local auction house to get them valued leaving Richard to continue to clear and clean. I don't think there's much antique value in it, but it's fun. So I think we'd sell it. Do you? I think we would. Nice sort of vintage retro item. I'm sure they'll be quite popular. I'm very glad Richard has paid me another visit because it looks like I'm going to get a bit of money out of it and a sorted out room. Sir, how are you? Well, all right, thank you. How'd you get on? Well, it was a surprise. It was absolutely amazing, because that dreadful plastic lobster, 10 to 20 pounds. What, for the lobster? Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Sorry. The rest of it, I mean, it all added up to between 215 to 335 pounds. Oh, is... wow. I'm making good progress in here. I think you'll be quite impressed. 
try and impress your new girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, can't wait to meet her. <laughs> Six out of ten men admit that it takes them just one minute to wrap a present. But there's a unique group of order-obsessed people who can spend much longer. Like Mark, who can take a whole hour on just one gift. Having visited Lindsay and Mark's homes, next is the turn of Essex mum of two, Amanda. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Not bad at all. You're good, come in, come Lovely. in. Shoes off or on? No, 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 it's fine, leave them on. I'll clean when you're gone. gone. <laughs> Although not diagnosed with OCD, Amanda can spend four hours every day making sure her home is germ-free. I actually sacked the window cleaners and got rid of them. They weren't getting rid of any germs. So in my house, the tree is solely for Santa to leave presents. Once he's left the presents, I have no need for a tree. So the tree will go up on the 1st of December and then it gets taken down at about 2 o'clock on Christmas Day. So once we've finished dinner and everyone's having a little so we've nap. we've not even had the Queen's speech. <laughs> no. <laughs> Different. Yeah. I think she's quite cruel. I think she's got two small children and I think that she should leave it up until at least they've gone. You know, you can, you're sitting there finishing off your dinner and all of a sudden she's jumping up and ripping the tree down. Every year, Amanda buys a tree in November, dresses it and puts it into storage ready for Christmas. It's Christmas made easy. A bit like you, Mark, I haven't got the patience. I'd probably end up smashing it up. Mm. So it's easier just to do it like this. What do you mean like I did with mine? <laughs> <laughs> You've just dragged the box in. It's just jumped out of the box <laughs> and it's done. How do you keep your tree clean? So I actually steam my tree. I've got the steamer out every day anyway. Just jet the steam over it. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone steam their tree before. So is this daily? On average, I'd say it's every other day. Wow. So once I've given it a quick blast of the steam, I then get my other best friend and I give it all a quick spray. This is a little spray. It's effectively disinfectant in yeah. a spray. Brilliant, Amanda. I'm feeling really jealous. I'm definitely going to start spraying mine. I feel like I'm almost an adequate male because I don't steam my tree. <laughs> I just... I don't think I'll change my Christmas habits at all. I love that it's stress-free, it's quick, it looks how I need it to look and it stays clean. In Kent, Robin and germaphobe Vinny have cleared the living room of 200 plastic bags, a wheelie bin of rubbish and three brooms. Yeah. Isn't that what you pick up rubbish with? Yeah. And that's a little bin. <laughs> with just a few hours left before partner Kevin gets home from work, the boys are loading up Robin's van for a trip to the local tip. Are you sure you're happy about this, eh? Yeah. Good. I get quite excited. I like to go to rubbish tips. Oh, really? Why is that, then? Let's see what I can find to bring back. Oh, you won't be bringing nothing back, mate, cos my eyes will be all over you, yeah? Let's get in. Let's okay. go. Uh, uh, uh... It's covered in doggies, and I really am not sitting on them. It's your dog seat, isn't it? Yeah. The only way I'm going to get in that car is if I'm allowed to bag up all the seats, put black bags all over them, even on the floor bit, or else I'm not getting in, and I need to cover my face. Just let me tell you, Robin, this is a big deal for me, mate. Since visiting Robin, Vinny has managed to cut his cleaning back by an hour a day, but he's still as germaphobic as ever. Vinny's very extreme. Um, I think they're poles apart, to be honest. I'm probably... He thinks I'm extreme with the dogs, and I think he's yeah. extreme with his manic cleaning. And last of all, not least... Yeah, I'm just going to put this one round it like this. Do you want a hand with it? No. <laughs> I hope I don't get pulled up for carrying a terrorist man with me. <laughs> I'm well pleased that he's managed to um, throw all the stuff away now, and hopefully this time now there is no going back and he will go forward with it. Um... Previously, OCD-diagnosed Alison tried to confront her condition by leaving her germ-free environment to transform hoarder Dusty's life. Hello. 
Hello. My name's Dusty. Hello, my name's Alison. Hello. <laughs> Full-time mother of six, Alison from Lincolnshire spends over 30 hours a week keeping her five-bedroom family home immaculate. The plug socket, because I've buffed it that many times, I've took the top layer of enamel off it. I don't like cleaning. I don't want to be a cleaner. It's the fear of not cleaning. OCD is the fear of not doing, of not cleaning. Come in, please come. To challenge her OCD, Alison spent four days with Dusty from Hertfordshire. The rest of the house, is it like this? Yeah. Okay, so Whose priority was his horses rather than his home. Horse food in your kitchen? Yeah. From the very beginning, there were disagreements. You're keeping the stuff like a museum. I think I'm, I think I'm quite sure you're, you're, I don't living, want, in, you're I don't living in a museum. Live, I don't live in a bloody museum. I live in a it's house that's clean. And over who was the better cleaner? You're smearing now. It's what we've done again. Oh. To my standard. So I've, it's not to your standard. Not to paint that work up there. I've got to paint. I want to paint the horse again. This is about giving you quality of life. I can't, I can't, I can't talk. We couldn't move on Wednesday in this talk. house. I can't talk. But after four long days, Alison managed to confront her OCD. Now, I kind of, my OCD's kind of gone out the window and it's turning into, about, it's more about Dusty than me. And OCD is always about me. Restoring order to the downstairs of Dusty's home. <laughs> A really good job. Lovely. Fantastic. Much better, much better. But there was one thing they never agreed on, where to put the horse feed. I've just spent all day cleaning this kitchen know, and you're moaning that I've no, took I your meat out in into a bin. Meat. It's like a wild horse, really. You, you won't be able to change him, really. I felt been nagged for the last four days. It's been like a marriage from hell. Good girl. We keep on the road, Jack won't give it up. Now Alison's back in Hertfordshire. We're driving this old truck down this dirty old track. To see if Wild West fanatic Dusty has mended his messy ways. We're a cowboy still. I'm really curious to see how Dusty's getting on. We've always had unfinished business. and We didn't see eye to eye last time. And it'd be really nice to see that he's made great progress. I'm looking forward to seeing Alison again. Yeah, we didn't hit it off very well. I hope this time it'll be better and it won't be such a showdown. I've had a big improvement on my life and I uh, hope she uh, sees an improvement. Hey, Alison. Hello, Dusty. How you doing? Oh, will you come in? Thank you. Okay. Previously, after 50 hours clearing and one full skip, Alison had created a welcoming living and dining area. It's actually not too bad to stay. I'm really impressed, actually, that you've got a living area that you've kept on top mm. of it. Mm. Compared to when I walked in here a year ago, it, it, it's amazing, really. I wouldn't say it was clean. No, it's, say it was it's clean. not up to your standard, no. obviously, no. no. You probably can't <laughs> eat off the floor. No floor's going to be clean enough to eat off the floor. You can eat off my floor. So I brought you this as a peace offering. Oh, it's lovely. Is that OK? That's lovely, yeah. That's a peace lovely. offering. Yeah. On her first visit, Alison removed the horse feed from the kitchen and after seven hours of elbow grease, brought it up to her standards. Remember the kitchen? Oh, yeah, I remember the kitchen well. You, you put the horse feed, feed back You're in the You're wrong about kitchen. horse feed, that's why. You're the one that's wrong. It's not a hazard at all. It's not about being a hazard, is it? It's, you well, know, you've got. What difference does it make? It keeps it dry. It keeps it clean. In I the gave kitchen. you bins to keep it dry. The horses are domesticated. They've got to be treated with respect, and their food's got to be kept clean and dry. It's just a no-no. It shouldn't be in the kitchen. And he cannot see that. We've got unfinished business. Even though he's made me really angry and I just want to go home, I'm going to finish what I started. I'm going to make sure that the last... I can help just do that a little bit more. Alison's got just 24 hours to make a difference once more. Because I owe it to myself. I started something and I need to finish it. And he needs it. Since you last visited, Dusty's hallway has become a dumping ground again. We've got tools here. Mm -hmm. If we could clear this and make it safe yeah. before yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just not good, is it? No, no. 
That's, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, yeah so exactly. if we make a room in yeah. the shed, get it cleaned, yeah. get it in there, yeah. job's good and then I can yeah. go home happy. That's it, yeah, well done. no problem. How have you been there, Alison, since we last met? Since being here, I have been able to do a lot more in my life than go and do the cleaning. Good. I go to the good. gym yeah, good. and then I go back and clean. Mm -hmm. But cleaning, is, I don't enjoy it, I don't want to do it. It's something that having OCD, it makes you do it. I can appreciate the problem you've got. It's not, it's not me to, to judge on you. Very difficult to put somebody else in somebody else's mind, isn't it? It's, it's difficult. Okay. It is difficult. I'm going to take them to the shed yeah. and bring another bucket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the horse blanket. It's about 100 quid's worth now. It's filthy. When you're doing it as well, because you get a result straight away, it kind of makes you feel like you've achieved something. Before she came to Dusty's, Alison's OCD used to make her late for every appointment, but that was 12 months ago. Things have really changed in a year for me because I couldn't have left the house before if it was unclean. Um, I'd have to clean it and then go out. Now I go to the gym, I do reading, and I can go back and clean it. And it, it doesn't niggle me as much as it used to. For me, that's a, a really, really good step forward. I'm very grateful for Alison's help um, to do the uh, hard work. It must be really hard for her to do it. Very grateful for it, very grateful. Fantastic. For me, it's been a really good experience. I'm, I'm glad I came to Disters and I'm glad I've come back to Disters. I took loads out of it last time and my life has changed, so hopefully it will change a bit more. Back in Kent, Robin and Vinny are adding the finishing touches to the living room before partner Kevin arrives home from work. It'll be good for Kevin to have the living room back because I know Kevin will make good use of it. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, yeah. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Yes. Are you all ready for uh, seeing what we've been doing all day for you? I've been praying it's half as good as last time. 24 hours ago, Robin and Kevin's living room had slipped back into chaos. Now it's been cleared and cleaned back up to Vinnie's standards once more. Right then, Kevin. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. It's all yours. Oh, lovely. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Somewhere to sit, somewhere to just spend time with you. Yeah, it's going to be so lovely. Good. So wonderful. Yes. Happy? Yes. Good. I want to say something which I think is very, very, very important. Um, I kind of think, to a certain degree, that you have got to shoulder some of the responsibility, Kevin. I know you go out to work and Robin's here majority of the time, but this is your home, mm. both of yours. OK. I think we ought to make a deal. Yeah. yeah. I'm so, gifting if... the room to you. I won't put anything in here. You keep it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Come here. Come here. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I think this time, because he's seen that I understand him a lot more now, I think that it will make more of an effort to keep the place going. Seeing them both together again, yeah, I'm overjoyed and I'm happy and I can go away thinking that, yeah, I've accomplished something. Cheers. Cheers. It's been great having Vinny back in the house. I'm, I'm happy to keep in touch with him and, and stay friends. I, I hope that's what we'll do. In Wiltshire, after 24 hours, 10 bin bags worth of clutter has been removed. Richard and Christopher are putting the finishing touches to the front room, ready for special visitor Julie. Can't wait to meet the girlfriend. Hello, Julie. How are you? Hi, darling. This is my friend Richard. Nice Julie. To meet you, Richard. Very nice to meet you. Come and see what we've been up to. One day ago, the front room was hidden under 15 years of forgotten antiques and clutter. Now it's been transformed into a romantic dining room for two. Here we go. What do you reckon? It's amazing. You can actually open the door. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. Think it looks nice. You see there's a photo of my mum and dad on top of that. Oh, that's lovely as well, yeah. 
and you can see the mirror, can't you? Yeah. Well, it was full from floor to ceiling. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Beautiful. And all thanks to Richard. Not just me, no. You, uh, you certainly did, done your fair share of work. And three more rooms to go. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> Play this my holiday destination. <laughs> Every year, Christopher's yeah, house. Yeah. I think from last time, I think my motivation has definitely lifted Christopher a bit. And I think now, with Julie's influence... To Richard. ..it's going to keep him on the right path. Thank you to Richard. I've told him he can't um, bring all... Loads of clutter in here again. No, I'm not going to. So I think the two of us together, we've had a positive effect on Christopher, and I think he's, he's going the right way.